Hello, it's Peter Carter here. I'm making this video April 2024 and I have felt compelled to make this video on the Israel Government Gaza genocidal annihilation. These are the weapons, the terrible, huge destructive weapons that the Israeli military is using to bring about the annihilation of Gaza. So my objective is to wage peace, and I was disappointed it was very hard to find anything with respect to peace. So I was pleased to find this. I was also very glad to come across this uh, very recent article in the Washington Post, 25th of April. Headline, Gaza Israeli Peace Will Come Only by putting people before states. I really agree with this. I was pleased to find this. And this is an image for a Gaza ceasefire pilgrimage. But I came across this very important report published 25th of March 2024, a comprehensive 25-page report, a United Nations report, entitled Anatomy of a Genocide, Report of the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in Palestinian Territories. So this was a thoroughly researched report and formally presented to the UN. So after five months of military operations, I won't go through those terrible figures. I've got the most recent ones, which of course are way worse. But the conclusion is that by analyzing the patterns of violence and Israel's policies, that is the Israel government's policies, in its onslaught on Gaza, the report concludes there are reasonable grounds that the commission of a genocide has been met. And that's according to the UN Convention on Genocide. My conclusion, painfully, is that by all reports, the Israel military Gaza genocidal war is unique by the rate and number of women and children killed and homes destroyed, by the rate and amount of bombing in a country that has no defenses against the bombardment whatsoever. I've discovered that the Israeli Air Force uses three main types of military aircraft. They're all United States made, and almost all the bombs dropped on Gaza are made and are from the United States. They are apparently the MK-80 family of bombs. So I find myself getting into more and more detailed horrors. This photograph here is a chief of staff visiting the Israeli Air Force's fleet of F-35, and I think that's an I, bombers. Anyway, F-35 fighter jet bombers. So to the bombs. Uh, this is from the Washington Post, 7th of April this year. In March of 2024, the Biden administration ordered the transfer of 1,800 MK-84 2,000-pound bombs and 500 500 pound bombs so there's a total of 2300 bombs now this that i discovered is important the 2000 pound bombs are capable of leveling city blocks and leaving craters in the earth of 40 feet across and more so this is one of these uh, 2000 pound bombs and this is what it looks like when it's being dropped. And I have found, and I was totally shocked and confused when I saw an image just like this over Gaza. Also, I recalled having seen this kind of image. This is Gaza. Palestinians look for survivors following the Israeli bombardment in the southern Gaza Strip. November of 2023, there is a 40, 50 foot at least crater by one of these uh, huge United States made bombs and delivered to Israel. That's the kind of image you see. This is from the World Health Organization. Um, six months of war leave the Al Shifa hospital in ruin. So the hospitals have been destroyed, as you will have heard. This is from the Relief Web. This source is the Euromed Monitor, a human rights monitor 
posted on the 24th of April. The headline is 200 days of military attack on Gaza, a horrific death toll amid international failure to stop Israel's genocide of Palestinians. This article goes into a lot of detail, and it, it's painful to read. So the up to the latest on the numbers, and you know these are getting these numbers are growing every day. So they report the Israeli army has killed 38,621 civilians in 200 days, including 10,091 women and 15,078 children. Bodies of several thousand are still under the rubble. Thousands are missing and presumed dead. These statistics include the killing of 137 journalists, 356 medical personnel, and 42 civil defense personnel. Um, this so-called war is unique in the worst kind of ways, and they are many. And so the report goes on based on these data. The daily death toll for Palestinians has reached 212 per day, including 50 women per day and 79 children per day. And it says these horrifying statistics are unprecedented in the context of contemporary warfare. I found it necessary to take a few maps. So here is the Middle East there, there's Saudi Arabia. So here is that square going in. There's Egypt, there's Jordan, there is Syria, there's Israel, and that is the Gaza Strip. And this is the Mediterranean Sea. So the Mediterranean and Gaza Strip. There's a closer up view showing the Gaza Strip and an important uh, quote from the UN addressing the question, where do Palestine refugees live? Here's the situation on that. Nearly one third of registered Palestine refugees, which are more than 1.5 million people, live in 58 recognized Palestine refugee camps in Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, the Gaza Strip, and the West Bank. So there's this very large area of the West Bank. And this is Israel. This is a historical map of the countries as they were divided up after World War I. There's Iraq, there's Syria, there is Palestine. I got this map because it's a particularly good map of showing the various countries, but it also, uh, the purpose of the map was to show the airstrikes and bombing. So that's in there too. There's Israel there, so there's Gaza. There's the West Bank, Lebanon, which we've heard about recently. There's Syria, poor country and people of Syria. There's Jordan, with the invasion of Gaza carrying on and being constantly on the news, I thought, well, I should look up Google on uh, Gaza oil and gas. And sure enough, it came right up. So here is the oil and gas situation. And that definitely needs to be looked at. So this shows uh, gas fields in red and oil fields in green. There's Gaza, that's Israel. And so you see all of these gas fields here and a number of gas fields and in Israel and Israel has some oil and there's also oil there. So right at the point of this invasion, uh, a number of oil and gas fields now, there is a gas field actually called the Gaza Marine Offshore Field. There it is, Gaza Marine. I think this hatching represents a disputed offshore area. Anyhow, initially, of course, I went to Wikipedia. And Wikipedia, here's a short statement, but if you want the rest, Wikipedia has it. The reserves of natural gas were found offshore the Gaza Strip in 2000, and it was named Gaza Marine. This is a news item. All of these are news clips, of course, I'm going through. This relates to the United Nations Court of Justice, the IGC, the Court of Justice of The Hague. What had happened here was that South Africa had brought a complaint of genocide by Israel government and forces. And this is the report of that 11th of January 2024. This is one of the lawyers of South Africa who stated to the court that Israel shows chilling intent 
to commit genocide in Gaza. And in fact, the lawyers for South Africa were able to draw a new and comprehensive database compiled by Law for Palestine, which meticulously documented and collates 500 statements that embody the Israeli state's intention to commit genocide and to incite genocide since October. After two weeks of deliberation, the, uh, the International Court made a decision. Certainly was an odd decision, and it certainly wasn't satisfactory. The report said that genocide was plausible, and I noticed they did not order a ceasefire. So as we all know, there's a horrendous, uh, obviously horrendous child death in Gaza as the population and buildings are being constantly bombed and destroyed. Child death in Gaza, this headline said, is higher than any other conflict. Over 13,000 children have been killed in Gaza, with others severely nourished. This is UNICEF, saying the UN agency says surviving children do not even have the energy to cry as famine looms in the besieged enclave being bombarded for months. This is a huge civilian population, mostly women and children. It's mostly women and children who are being killed by the airstrike bombardment, and they have no defense whatsoever, nothing. And of course, again, it says thousands more have been injured, or we can't even determine where they are. We haven't seen this kind of death rate among children in any other conflict in the world. Save the, Save the Children International made a statement in which they said children's rights and childhoods have been decimated over the last six months in Gaza. Children are being killed by bombs and billets. They're dying from hunger and disease. How many children need to suffer until leaders take action? My point, and I think the painfully obvious point here, is that bombing defenseless civilians and knowingly killing children every day, day after day after day. That is a terrible, unprecedented crime, and manifestly it's a terrible evil. It is a worst possible criminal evil. Yes. Here's um, another headline. Israel's Gaza bombing campaign is the most destructive of this century. So December last year, satellite technology reveals bombing more intense than Ukraine, than Syria, or even the Second World War. Again, this is bombing against totally, totally defensive large civilian population. So there was a study done here by satellite technology, so there is a huge area being totally destroyed, bombed to rubble. So the intensity of bombing in Gaza is something the researchers said they'd never seen before. It's just the sheer speed of the damage. All these other conflicts, the Ukraine and Syria and Yemen, are years long. This is relevant, I think. This is a headline from Al Jazeera, March last year. Israel is pillaging not just Gaza's cities, but also its waters. Foreign companies, including European ones, are helping Israel loot Gaza's natural gas reserves. So that takes us back to the Gaza Marine Offshore Natural Gas Field. And there's the Gaza Strip, and there's Israel. Another headline, Israeli military is bombing Gaza to oblivion. And there's an actual photograph. UNICEF official tells of, quote, utter annihilation after traveling the length of Gaza. In the report, quite properly, it referred to the start of this by the Hamas invasion that killed 695 Israeli civilians, 373 Israeli security forces. And that, of course, is also an evil action because I believe children were killed. Another one from the media. There's an image of what's happening. By January of 2024, Israel's military had dropped 65,000 tons of bombs on Gaza in 89 days. This is one of the most intensive, destructive bombing attacks ever. For context, London was hit with an estimated 19,000 tons of bombs 
during the eight months of the Blitz. In Gaza, in a few months, 65,000 tons of bombs. And the atomic bomb that destroyed Hiroshima was equivalent to 15,000 tons, compared to 65,000 tons. And, of course, with this going on for many, many months, of course, the media started reporting that famine was the next thing that's going to happen. Famine is imminent in northern Gaza. 70% of people experiencing catastrophic hunger. That's from the UN Food Agency, March of this year, 24. UNICEF officials tells of, quote, utter annihilation after traveling the length of Gaza. So clearly this is a genocide. They describe children on the brink of death and families desperate for clean water, food, and shelter. As soon as you drive through the north, you get that universal gesture of hunger, people putting their hands to their mouths, women and children with very gaunt faces. One of the members of the UN on this journey says, I have not seen that level of devastation in 20 years with the UN. Mentioning seeing skeletal children. And the quote from the UNICEF was, and, and good for UNICEF, we are seeing severe malnutrition cases, children who are on the brink of death, just skin and bones, and these are the ones who have managed to get to hospital. And so, in April this year, U.S. aid admits, and uh, this was a statement to the U.S. government, famine is underway in Gaza, and the media said, as the United States keeps arming Israel. In northern Gaza, the rate of child malnutrition prior to the October invasion was almost zero. It is now one in three. One in three kids suffering hunger, malnutrition, and facing famine. This is the worst in the world. This is the worst ever. Here's a photograph of doctors performing surgery at the one European hospital in March of this year. The quote here was a surgeon's, we have never seen cruelty like Israel's genocide in Gaza. Here is the United Nations uh, Human Rights. Here's a statement of the 5th of April, 2024, this year. The annihilation of Gaza must end, with over 33,000 at that time Palestinians, mostly women and children, dead. And we've seen the uh, images of the local people with their bare hands uh, pulling apart the rubble and in some extraordinary cases, managing to pull little children out of under the rubble who somehow had managed to survive and they were alive. So this report, Human Rights, said the violations of international law committed in Israel and Gaza, including gross violations of international human rights law and serious violations of international humanitarian law by all parties to conflict, as well as the destruction and suffering of civilians in Gaza over the last six months are unprecedented. Nothing like this has happened before. And, of course, the risk of further atrocity crimes is high. No, atrocities are happening day after day after day, and nothing is being done to stop it. Even the International Criminal Court did not make an order that this has to stop, an order for ceasefire. This is my last map for this video. On the left here is Gaza. This is the latest uh, record of damage and destruction by the Israeli military. It's dated the 9th of March of this year. And so there is northern Gaza, practically 70% of buildings destroyed and uh, central Gaza, and then uh, very large areas, regions of destruction in southern Gaza, and Rafa, the city in the south, which is on the border with Egypt, and which previously there has been a free uh, access between Egypt and Gaza, and Israel, of course. 
So uh, Rafa, all eyes are on Rafa because Israel is saying that it is going to proceed with another land invasion. Rafa has already been bombed and severely damaged, as you can see. Here's the larger view, and that's where we are now in the Middle East and Gaza and Israel. So there's Gaza, the Gaza Strip, and there's Rafa right on the border with Egypt. There's Egypt there, and this is Jordan, and of course this is Israel. Now there's a very big significance of Rafa and the situation of the border between Egypt and Israel and that because of the Camp David Peace Accord which is a peace treaty between Israel and Egypt and it was signed in 1979 and it has held ever since. So this is proof that peace is always possible peace between Israel and Arab countries, uh, this is proof positive that this can be achieved and held. But on the other hand, of course, there's a huge concern that with the Israeli military moving into Rafa, the Egypt-Israel peace accord may no longer hold. So the thing for us to do is to check out the various organizations, NGOs. One very well-known one is Amnesty International. This is uh, their image with their call for urgent ceasefire. So this is Avaz, uh, ceasefire, stop this war. Very, very appropriate. And this is a very easy one to sign on to. This is the one from Oxfam. Oxfam is one of my favorite NGOs doing tremendous work for so long around the world and uh, their message is simple ceasefire now uh, call for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip and Israel I would suggest that we make a call to stop the genocide there's a official and obvious confirmation of the ongoing genocide and build peace keep building opportunities, looking for all opportunities for peaceful messages and peaceful actions.